Okay, today's video is about a proposal for something new coming to JavaScript. And it's two new data types, record and tuple or tuple. Um, right now, this proposal is in stage two, and that's sort of halfway through the process. Stage zero is called straw man. Stage zero means somebody had an idea like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if JavaScript could vacuum my house? Stage one, you get an actual official write-up and so on. Someone says, okay, this is what I think this feature should be. And that gets proposed. Stage two, it's gone beyond that. So people have looked at the proposal and said, you know what, this is worth debating. Let's start talking about it and actually try and work out what the syntax would be and how it would work. That's where we are right now with records and tuples. Stage three is candidate which means, okay, we've done this, we've worked it out, we think we're going to put it in the browser now, so let's have sort of a, a final call for discussion. And then stage four, hey, it's it's done, it's finished, it's out in the wild, the browsers can do it. Um, now what often happens is when things get to stage three, that's when the browsers start adding it in there as a test. So we're at stage two right now, and things are looking good. Um, really, really useful. Now, this is sort of a, it is a new data type or two new data types, but these are going to be two new primitives. Now, the last couple of primitives that were added were big int and symbol. Um, record and tuple are sort of analogous to an object and array. The difference being that these things are immutable. Now, the uh, link to this um, I've got this down in the description, and there's also a playground, which I'm going to show you, and we're going to work through some of the syntax here. Uh, the link to the playground is also down in the description, so you can follow along. Um, I'm going to save the finished link and the starting link to the playground. So the playground, just go in how it's initially set up, and then my finished version. So if you want to play around with what I've done, um, that link is going to be down in the description as well. On this uh, GitHub repo, there is a whole bunch of documentation. There's a lot to read through here talking about what it is. And I'm going to try and summarize as best I can um, sort of the, the main points from this. So jumping over into the playground. As I was saying, these are new kinds of primitives. Now, a primitive, hopefully you're familiar with a, a primitive in JavaScript means it's just a value number, string, boolean, null, undefined. These things are primitives. They are just values. So the number five can only be the number five. True can only be true. So you can't really do anything with them. Now, we have objects and we have arrays. So if you think of them as analogous to that, so an object and an array, an object, there's a property and a value, property and a value. An array, it's a series, it's a list of values. They can be different data types. You can put arrays inside of objects, you can put objects inside of arrays. They can be nested inside of each other. The difference between the object and the array and the record and the tuple is that these things are immutable. Now, if you don't know what immutable is, I did a video just the other day, um, link there to it up at the top. Basically, it means that you're not allowed to change the contents. And this is sort of the main problem why you can't do something like declare an array. So I've got let array equal, and then I've got a few things in there. And then I create another one like this with the exact same contents. So if I've got these two arrays and they have identical contents, if I try to write out, hey, you know, does A equal B? No, it doesn't. So this one right here, this third false, that's this. Even though they are, it's because they are objects. Everything in JavaScript is either a primitive, meaning it's just a value, or it's an object. Functions are objects, arrays are objects, objects are objects. So if it's not a primitive, it is an object. And if it's an object, you cannot do this comparison. You can't use two or three equal signs or object.is to compare the two things and have it come back as true. And that's because these are stored in two different places in memory. Every time you create an object, 
of any kind, it is stored somewhere in memory. So while we can't do this, this is not going to work. If I took my tuple here and we go inside of here and say, I'm going to take my tuple and I'm going to compare it to, I'm going to make a brand new one here with the same values, one, two, and three. True, these two things are the same. Two equal signs, three equal signs, they are just values. So you can, hopefully you can start to see now the difference between an array and a tuple or an object in a record is that these things are immutable. The new data types, they are primitives and they're actually uh, suggesting that we call them compound primitives because there's multiple values inside there, but it's still a primitive. It's still just a value we can nest one inside the other. So I could, if I wanted, let me just comment this line out. I could take a record and put a tuple inside of it. So we're creating a new one. And the syntax here, if you haven't noticed already, it's just putting a, a pound sign, a hashtag right in front of this thing. That's what turns it into a record or it turns it into a tuple. So with those two things inside there, we can create our property. So I've got a property called A, and then I've got a property called B, and then I'm gonna add inside of that a tuple. So you can nest them inside of each other, just like we were before with the arrays and the objects. We're allowed to nest these things inside. So as long as what we're putting inside of here is all primitives. That's the deciding factor. When you say that I want a tuple, it means you no longer are allowed to, and we've got a syntax error coming up here, not absolutely everything is working flawlessly in the playground. Um, like these two lines right here. If you use the type of operator to look at the two of them, it should come back and say record or tuple um, just because of the way the playground is set up and being able to overload uh, type of. Um, this is failing right now, but that's okay. This is a stage two proposal, so we're not going to get absolutely everything running in here. Um, so we can nest inside as long as what we're nesting inside is another primitive value. I couldn't take something that was uh, an object and put it inside of a record or a tuple. I couldn't take a function and put it inside of here because those are not primitive values. Those are actually objects. Okay, so this is the basic syntax and we know that we can nest things together. We're going to be using the square bracket syntax or the dot syntax, just like we do here. So if I wanted to get something out of my record, I can say my record dot a. I got the one. If I say dot b, there's the two. So I am getting it out. Or we can use the square brackets. So this is b gives me the number two. So either syntax is going to work just like that or that. Okay, so no changes there. The only change really is the fact that we're putting these hashtags in front of them. Now there is one alternative syntax. It's the bar syntax, but the hashtag syntax seems to be winning out. It just seems to be simpler for people to type. Uh, the bar version of this, if instead of the hashtag, what you would do is you would put the bars like this. And it's not wanting to let me, there we go. So with a single pipe character at the beginning and the end. Uh, so if I said bar syntax, if that's what I'm doing here, um, this should work, but we're working with the hashtag. That seems to be the syntax that's winning out. It's the one I've been playing around with this for a little while, and I, I think the uh, the hashtag is just easier to work with. It's easier to type. It's easier to read. Okay, so deeply immutable. That's our next thing here. Um, when we do things like this, when we nest one inside the other, we can still do the comparison. So I can take two things that are nested deeply and we can compare them. 
So I'm going to try to create here an object, or rather a tuple. Um, and we'll put in two, four, six, and then we will put a record inside there with A is one and B is two. Just keep these simple. And then I want to compare that to the same thing. True. So unlike objects in array, when you're starting to nest things inside of them, with objects in array, these things start to get affected by what we call shallow copying versus deep copying. The fact that these nested things inside of here can be just pointers. So I could take right here and put my record. It's still true because this is just a value. And if this value is the same as this value, unlike with two objects, it would be two places in memory. These two are going to be the same. So that's another thing, the deeply immutable, the fact that these properties deeply inside um, can be compared like this and we don't get those reference issues. Um, one of the things I was talking about in a previous video and in my recent video on immutability was object.freeze. And this was a way that you could take an object and say, hey, this object is no longer allowed to uh, be changed. But when you call object.freeze, it is a shallow freezing. It's not freezing the nested thing inside. So if this were an object instead, if I was dealing with an array with an object inside of it, and I froze the array, the object would not be affected by the freezing. So freezing is shallow when it's done, and it's not going to work for what we're trying to do here. Here, we're actually being able to copy the things deeply, compare the things deeply, and we are dealing with absolutely 100% immutable um, compound primitives. JSON. So this is another thing that we can work with. There's a proposed change to the JSON methods, a brand new JSON method. JSON, we have JSON.parse, but there's a new thing, JSON parse immutable. And this is going to read through your JSON data. So it's going to take the JSON string and turn it into, instead of turning it into objects and array, it would turn it into records and tuples. Because the string is already a primitive, you can intentionally say, hey, I don't want objects and arrays. I don't want to deal with uh, things that are immutable. I want to absolutely have something that's immutable that can't be changed, that I don't have to worry about that. I can do deep comparisons. This is going to solve that problem for us. So parse immutable returns the string. If it's a string, a number, if it's a number, a boolean, if it's a boolean. But once we get beyond that to compound things, it's going to return records and tuples. Okay. Wrapper objects, that's my next topic. When we deal with primitives, like strings and numbers, I'm sure you've done this at some point. Let uh, this, and we've got hello world. So this is a primitive, right? It is just a value. So if we've got something that is just a value, how do I call methods on that? How do I do something like S dot length. Where is that property? Properties belong on objects. JavaScript behind the scenes creates these wrapper objects. So if I want to access a property or if I want to call a method like to uppercase, well, if it's a primitive, it can't have a method. Primitives are just values. And these work because JavaScript behind the scenes what it does is it goes and creates a wrapper object, which is a string type object. And that's where all these methods are kept and all the properties are kept. Well, for record and tuple, there will be wrapper objects as well. And that's where the methods are going to be kept. So the record will have the object methods. Tuples will have methods that are sort of like the arrays. Most of the array methods are going to be there, but there will be some differences. So with a uh, tuple, 
we could do things like, um, so if I've got my tuple, I want to call one of these methods. So these are the array methods. Tuple is going to have in its wrapper object ones that are very similar to this, but there's going to be some that are a little bit different. Ones that cre that actually mutate the original, like push. Push is not su uh, suggested as being part of the tuple methods. Instead of push, because in an array, push will change the original array, they're saying pushed. So if I do my tuple pushed, and I'm going to pass in the number 77, like this, we take this original, 1, 2, 3, and what this does is it returns a new tuple. And it will have the values 1, 2, 3, and 77. So it doesn't change the original. The original is immutable. So that brings us to, well, okay, how do you change the value? Well, if we're dealing with immutable things, we don't want to change the original. We want to create new versions. I'm either going to entirely replace the old one, or I'm going to figure out a way of creating a new one that's a combination of the old one plus something else. And we're going to use the spread operator for doing that. So I say editing, but we're saying sort of editing. We're, cre we're creating a new thing. Okay. Now with the spread operator, the same as we'd use with um, arrays and objects. If I were to, let's create a new one here. Let's say I've got a record. Here's my new record that I'm creating. It's going to have the property A, it's going to have the property B, which is 2, and C, that is 3. Okay, simple enough. I now want to change the value of B to be 4, and I want a new property called D, which is going to be 77. To do that, we create a brand new one, because these are primitives. Now, I could overwrite the old one. We could say rec equals and then overwrite the old one. But usually, when you're dealing with immutable things, you want to leave the original, just in case you need that at some point in the future. So here we are creating a brand new one. And the first thing I'm going to put inside there is the old one. So I'm creating a brand new immutable record. I'm taking this old one. I'm calling using the spread operator to put the A, B, and C inside of here. And now, I can change the value of B at the point where I'm creating it and then add in that new D that is 77. So if I log rec and I log rec2, I have two records and we can see them here. 1, 2, and 3 and 1, 4, 3, and 77. All right, so those are sort of the high points of how records and tuples work. Um, I hope you get some value out of this. Um, try out this playground. Play around with the records and tuples and compare them with objects and arrays so you can get a sense of what's happening here. Uh, if you have any thoughts on it, then by all means jump into the conversation on GitHub about uh, the proposal. Um, if you find things that aren't quite working, you know, there's a, f a feedback thing here for the uh, playground. You can also pass some feedback along for that as well. Um, so if you have any questions about these, I'm, I'm not the <laughs> master of records and tuples. I don't have all the answers for you, but feel free to uh, ask any questions that you want. Um, if you're looking for more information about immutable, uh, I've got that video linked to here. And uh, if you want more about the freeze method, I've got information about that one as well. All right, so hope you found that useful. And as always, thanks for watching.